let f of x equal 2x plus 1 and g of x equal negative x squared plus 8x minus 8. Find the following two functions. In part a, we need to find f of f composed g of x and simplify. And in part b, we need to find g composed f of x and simplify. So part a, when you are asked to find f composed g of x, you're being asked to find f of g of x. And you might notice that I'm writing this g of x very small. And that's because I want you to understand that all we're going to be doing is taking this function and substituting it into this function. So what that looks like then is we don't want to write g of x anymore. That's too many different letters. We've got f, g, and x. Uh, it would be good if we could knock that down by a letter. Right now we have three, one, two, three different letters. Let's see what we can do here. g of x is the same thing as negative x squared plus x minus 8. Cool. So now we have f and x's. But I think we could do a little bit better. We still have one two different letters here. Let's see if we can get this down to one letter. Uh, it looks like up here f of x equals 2x plus 1. So if this x gets replaced with something, this x will also get replaced with that same thing. So this is like writing whatever's in the parentheses here will get multiplied to 2 and then have 1 added to it. So this will be 2 times negative x squared plus x minus 8 plus 1. So then all you have to do is distribute this 2 and combine any like terms. So this is going to be negative 2x squared plus 2x. And here we've got 2 times negative 8 is negative 16 plus 1 more will give you a negative 15. And this is the answer. That can't be simplified. Simplification could include factoring, and this polynomial cannot be factored. Nicely, anyway. All right, for part B, finding g compose f of x is going to be done similarly to finding f composed g of x. Uh, so I will stop talking here and give you a chance to pause the video. You can try this one yourself. In about 10 seconds, the answer will just appear. So here is the completely worked out answer for part B. Um, so g compose f of x is the same thing as writing g of f of x. Again, there are three different variables or three different letters here. Let's see if we can knock that down to 2. We can by substituting 2x plus 1 in for f of x here. And now we have two different letters still. Let's see if we can knock it down to 1, um, perhaps only x's. So if you look at the function up here, g of x is equal to this stuff. So whenever this x gets replaced, these x's get replaced. So this is 2x plus 1 squared. Here's 2x plus 1. Here's minus 8. That minus 8 is still a part of this. So if you FOIL this out, you'll get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 plus 2x plus 1 minus 8. And then you can distribute the negative to all three terms in this set of parentheses. So that'll be this step. This is a negative 4x squared minus 4x minus 1 plus 2x plus 1 minus 8. Combine terms into this. And if you want to get really fancy and simplify this, you can common factor a negative 2 to the front. That being said, either one of these answers is good. Let f and g be functions defined below. Find f composed g of x and its domain. 
So f compose g of x is the same thing as writing f of g of x. So I can replace this g of x with everything on this side. So this allows me to write f of the following. So now I just have to look back up at this function here because that's the function we have left is f. And I have to substitute this in for these x's on the right side of this function. So that'll look like this. So here you can see I have the function f with g being substituted into f. And this looks scary. You don't want fractions within fractions. So what we can do here is multiply the top and bottom by the LCD. And luckily, uh, the LCD is very easy to find here. It is x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply the entire fraction by x minus 2 in the top and bottom. And the whole point in doing that is so that when you distribute this x minus 2 here, it cancels. But you also have to distribute the x minus 2 to the negative 4. And the same thing is going to happen in the denominator here. When you distribute this x minus 2 to this first term, the denominator goes away, but you still have to multiply it to that 5. So the new fraction will look like this. Here we go, 2x plus 3 minus 4 times x minus 2, and 2x plus 3 plus 5 times x minus 2. Finally, when you distribute the negative 4 in the top and the 5 in the bottom and collect like terms in the top and collect like terms in the bottom, you end up with a fraction that looks like this. You get negative 2x plus 11 over 7x minus 7. And just from here, if you take a look at this denominator, you might be thinking to yourself, well, shoot, we have to check where that denominator equals 0. Because after all, you are asked to find f composed g of x and its domain. So uh, when you set this denominator equal to 0 and solve for x, you'll see that part of the domain will be all real numbers, but x cannot equal 1. Again, you just set this equal to 0, or set it to be not equal to 0, and solve for x, and it'll show you that x is not allowed to be equal to 1. But the question I have for you is, is this the only restriction on the domain? And the answer is no, and that is due to this idea of composing these two functions. Say, for example, I ask you to find f of g of 3. Well, first thing you want to do is find out what is g of 3. Well, if you can substitute 3 in for this x and this x, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9, x minus, uh, sorry, 3 minus 2 is 1. So 9 over 1 is 9. So we know that g of 3 is 9, so I can just substitute that in there, and then I would have to find f of 9 then. And then I could just substitute 9 in here and get 9 minus 4 is 5, over 9 plus 5 is uh, 5 over 14. And that's allowable. It gives me an answer when I substitute in 3. However, is there a number that I am not allowed to substitute into this function? Well, we answer, to answer that, we can just set this denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. And it turns out x is not allowed to equal 2. Because if x equals 2 in this function, it won't work. It'll give a divide by 0. So from g of x, x is not allowed to be 2. So let's think. g can't be 2 because of this original function here. It's a restricted value here. And 1 doesn't work because after our composition, that's what gives us an equal 0 in the denominator here.
we didn't have to worry about finding it for this other function f. Just whatever function was being input to the other, so this g, and the final result. So it's all real numbers except 1 and 2. The graph of a function f is given. That's this one over here on the right. Describe how the point on the new graph is transformed by a new function given below and sketch the graph of the new function. So I already have some notes on this page. You can see that this negative tells you to reflect over the x-axis, that this one half is a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, and that this plus three is a shift up three units. So one thing that you'll want to do, that you'll want to do in uh, doing this particular problem is reflect and stretch or shrink before doing any shifting. So, that being said, there are a couple of different ways that this could be done. You could find nice points over here, like this one, this one, this one, and this open dot. And like the previous couple exercises, you could just find that the point maybe perhaps this one right here is negative uh, three comma two and then you can just apply all of these transformations listed in the function the negative which is a reflection over the x the shift up three for the y coordinate or the setting the one half x equal to negative three for the x coordinate and you could do that with all those points and then make sure you just connect them in the right order. Or uh, what you could do is do these entire uh, transformations to the graph all at once. For example, if you are going to reflect something over the x-axis, that means all of the y values will change signs. So since this is in pink, I'm going to do that with uh, pink dots over here on the graph. So this y coordinate here is a positive two. If you multiply it by negative one, it'll end up being a negative two. This y coordinate is positive four, that will turn into a negative four. This y coordinate is positive one, will turn into negative one. And this y coordinate is zero, so that will stay zero as an open dot. So a transformed graph looks something like this now. That looks like it was reflected over the x-axis. The next thing we need to do is do the horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Remember, when you're doing a horizontal stretch, this number will always be the reciprocal of this number. So this factor of two, what that will do is it will increase the distance between a point and the x-axis by a factor of two. So this point is three away from the x-axis in the negative direction. So that distance will increase to six and since I wrote this in blue here, I will put these dots in blue, so that'll be there. The x-coordinate here is zero, so if we multiplied zero times two, we would just get zero again, so that point's gonna stay there as a blue dot now. The distance this point is from the x-axis is one, so if we stretch that by a factor of two, it'll turn into two. So I'm gonna put a blue dot here. And lastly, this point right here is still going to be an open dot, and it's three away from the x-axis, and since we're stretching it horizontally by a factor of two, this will end up being over here at six, still as an open dot. Lastly, we have this plus three. So we did all the all of the reflections and stretches and shrinks before we do the shifting. So this plus three just means shift up three units 
and I'm going to shift the blue dots up three units and I'm going to use orange ink for this. So three units up from this blue dot is right there. Three units up for this second blue dot is right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to connect those. Three units up from the third blue dot is right here. And three units up for the fourth blue dot is way over here. And it is still open. So this orange graph is what we are after for this graph being transformed. Now if you went through and did each one by the, each particular point that the graph started with, right here, these four points, then you could, you would see that they all ended up right in the same place and you would just connect them from left to right. On this slide, one more uh, graph that is given over here. And we're going to be doing some, it looks like stretching and shrinking and reflecting over here. So, and since there are two multiplications happening, we can do them in either order we like. Uh, so for this first one, this is going to be a reflection over the x-axis and a vertical stretch of two, or by a factor of two. Uh, and again, we can do either of those that we like first. Uh, so I think the first thing I want to do is the reflection, and I'll go ahead and leave that in the pink ink. So on the original function right here, if we're going to reflect over the x-axis, that means we're multiplying a y by a negative. So all of the y-coordinates will change signs. So all of these y-coordinates are positive. So that means I will do this. And then the very last part here this is a positive part of the function, and this is a negative part of the function. So that's all going to change right here. So this pink graph is the reflection of the function. Now we need to stretch it out vertically by a factor of 2, and I'll do that in uh, blue over here on the right. So that just means a vertical stretch of two will uh, stretch this graph out vertically. So it is going to increase the y values by two, uh, by a factor of two. So we will be multiplying all of these y values by a factor of two. These y values are negative four, so that'll put us down here at negative eight. This y value is still at zero this y value is negative 4, so when that stretches out, it's going to be a negative 8. So right here, this graph will now look something like this. This y value is still at 0, and this y value is positive 4, so that'll stretch out to a positive 8, and will look something like that. So now we're at the blue graph. And finally, this negative in here with x means it will reflect over the y-axis. There we go. So that just means we are going to multiply all of the x values by negative 1. So the orange graph over here is what we will end up with. This positive 2 x value becomes a negative 2 x value. This positive 4 x value becomes a negative 4 x value. And this positive 6 x value becomes a negative 6 x value. So now following the orange graph, we 
have a final answer for what this looks like if you vertically stretch by a factor of 2, reflect over the x and the y axis. Again, this orange graph is the end result. In this example, you are asked to sketch the following piecewise function. Uh, so there are three parts to this piecewise function. You can see there's x minus 2 if x is less than negative 2. There's 4, uh, four minus x squared if x is between negative 2 and 1. And this bottom piece is 3 minus 2x if x is greater than or equal to 1. So now what you want to do is set up a few tables. So here I'm going to pick x and x minus 2. So I'm looking at this top function here. And with this top function, I know I'm only going to be plugging values in here for x if they're less than negative 2. So even though it says less than negative 2, I still want to start with that negative 2 and then pick a few more, so negative 3, negative 4, something like that, and then just figure out what happens when I substitute these numbers in for this x. I will get back a negative 4, a negative 5, and a negative 6. So I'm just going to plot these points over here on the graph, and I'm going to go left to right. So negative 4, negative 6, that's this point right here. Negative 3, negative 5, and that's this point right here. But this very last one, negative 2, negative 4, when I look back, it says x is less than negative 2. It doesn't say less than or equal to, it says less than negative 2. So when I put that over here on the graph, I'm going to leave it an open dot. So from that open dot to the left, all of the x's are less than negative 2. And I can keep going. So I'm going to draw a line with an arrow. For the next function, this next function only exists if uh, we're between negative 2, which we're allowed to equal, and 1. So I'm going to create another function here, another table, x and 4 minus x squared. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to start at negative 2, go to negative 1, 0, and 1, and stop at 1 because I can't pick any other x values. And I'm picking whole numbers here so that I can make the computations much easier. So at negative 2, if I substitute that in for this x, I will end up with a 0. If I put negative 1 in for that x, I will end up at 3. If I put 0 in for that x, I will end up at 4. And if I put 1 in for that x, I will end up at 3 again. But now we have to look at the endpoints. So I said do it from left to right. Negative 2 is as far left as we can go for this particular function. So negative 2 is less than or equal to. That equal to is there. I'm going to make it a solid dot, or we say a closed dot. And then I have a negative 1, 3, 0, 4, and 1, 3. But this point here, if you look up here, it's x is less than 1. It's not equal to. That leads me to believe that I should have an open dot there. So I will just connect these dots together. There we go. And finally, I'm going to set up one last table for x and 3 minus 2x. And this function only exists when x is greater than or equal to 1. So I can start at 1, and then I'll pick a, another couple numbers there. And then I just have to substitute these x values in here. 
and plot some points. And when you do that, it looks something like this. Here are the ordered pairs down here. And when you plot these ordered pairs, they're over here in blue on the graph. So this entire graph is what this function looks like when you graph it. Now we didn't have to worry about any open dots with this last piece because it says greater than or equal to 1.